Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Chris with Better Editor, and today we are going to do something that I promise every editor in their career has been asked to do, and that is make a slideshow. Yes, it can be thought of as a glorified PowerPoint presentation, but I promise there are ways to do it better and there are ways to do it faster, especially if you use the free presets that I'm giving you today. Okay, so we're talking slideshows today. Now, if you have not made a slideshow or have not been asked to make a slideshow, I promise as an editor, it is gonna happen. But I'm gonna show you how to make an awesome slideshow in no time at all. Let's check it out. So this is nothing crazy, it's nothing over the top, but it's smooth, it's elegant, it looks good, and it's definitely not as boring as something your grandmother would have made. The best part is it only took me a few minutes to put this together. And I'm sorry if your grandmother is also really good at making slideshows. I didn't mean to offend you. Anyways. Let's go back to the beginning. To start, we actually need to jump in to Adobe Photoshop. We're starting in Adobe Photoshop because one of the most common mistakes that people make when bringing images into an editing program like Adobe Premiere is that they don't resize their images to work well with the program. Most of the time, source images that are high resolution are going to be too big to use well inside of an editing program. And I'm about to show you an easy way to fix that. So let's grab an image. And I want to open my window actions panel. And in here, let's make a new action. And we are going to call this 72 dash DPI or dots per inch. 72 DPI is the standard for web and video. Now we'll go up to image and hit image size. Let's change our dimensions to make sure we're on percent. Same thing with our width and height. Make those percent and change the resolution to 72. Then we'll go back to our width and make that 100. So the image will stay the same size, but it'll get resampled to 72 dots per inch. Say okay. If we go over to our actions panel, you'll see that that was all recorded right here. Hit stop. Great. Now you can close this image. We don't need it anymore. Okay, let's fix all of our images at once. Go to File, Scripts, Image Processor. And the image processor inside Photoshop is a way of automating monotonous task. It's going to open up all of these images that we're going to point it to and resize them automatically. To do that, we'll select our folder, make sure we're on 300 DPI. Okay. And it's going to save in the same location. And we want our file type to be save as JPEG and also make sure to select resize to fit 4000 by 4000. What that means is it's going to constrain either the width or the height to 4000 or 4000 pixels depending on how big the image is. The last thing we need to turn on is make sure run action is selected. Under default actions, you'll see the new 72 DPI action that we created and then hit run. And now Photoshop is going to do its magic and run through every one of these photos and resize them so that they're video software appropriate. And we're done. Let's jump over to Premiere. Now, before we bring in those images into Adobe Premiere, there is a preference that we need to change. So run up to edit, Preferences, Timeline. In the Timeline Preferences window, look for the Still Image Default Duration setting. This setting tells Adobe Premiere that any images pulled inside of the program should default to a three second length. Now you can change this to whatever time you want. I find that three seconds is a great starting point because it's not too long and it's not too short. Now we can jump into Explorer. You'll see that Photoshop made a new folder in here called JPEG. I'm going to rename this to 72 DPI. We can open it and look and all of our file names are the same, but they've been resized to the appropriate size that we designated in Photoshop. So let's drag this into our footage folder and we'll call this one 72 DPI dash V2 and let's make a new sequence. Now you can grab this entire folder and drag it into the sequence. Stretch it out. Okay. Now if we scrub through here, we'll see that we have some cool pictures of a guy in a red or orange jacket in some pretty awesome locations. This should make for a pretty cool travel slideshow. Now these first two images that we have don't have the guy in them, so I'm going to get rid of those. Great. All right, step one. You'll see that we have some black bars on the top and bottom of our photos. The photo size doesn't quite fit the 1920 by 1080 frame size that we're working in inside the sequence. So to get rid of that, we can select a photo, go to our effect controls and scale it up until those black bars are gone. 
and then we can select motion, hit Control C to copy, select all of our clips, and hit Control V to paste. And now those black bars are gone because we've scaled them out of the frame. Great. So the next step in making a slideshow is giving some movement to this. And we really need to do something about these transitions between the edits. So let's add a cross dissolve. And my default is 12 frames. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up to one full second. And that's looking a little better. And we wanna move this cross dissolve to all of these edits. The easy way to do that is to select it, hit Control C, and then holding Control, click and drag and you'll see that all of our edits have been selected. You can then hit Control V, and the one second cross is all we had is instantly pasted across all of the edits that were selected. Now scrubbing through that again, you see we start to get a little bit of a slideshow feel. We're getting this nice cross dissolve between all the photos. This looks nice, but we need to kick it up another notch. So one of the things that helps that is adding some movement to the photos. So select this first clip. We'll come into our effect controls, go to the head of the clip, and put a keyframe on position and scale. We're going to give this a slight Ken Burns effect where we slowly push into a portion of the image. So to do that, we start with our keyframes, move down the clip, and let's scale up to say 54. I also want to push over so that we're focusing on our guy standing on the cliff. So I'll drag this this way, and then I'll move these two keyframes to the very end of the clip. So now we have this nice motion of pushing into the guy. And then on this next clip, we could grab our scale, and let's zoom in, let's begin at say 54, and then zoom out to 52. He's already in the center of the frame, so no reason to push. So we're pushing in, looks nice pulling out, that looks nice too. So as you can see, that's a good way to add some motion to these photos. But what if we're working with 100 photos and we don't have time to go through each individual one and add this Ken Burns effect? I got you covered. So let's remove those movements. So take off our motion. Then we can paste our zoom back so we get rid of the black bars. Okay, back to where we were. If you have a ton of photos and you need to add some motion to them, I have you covered with some presets that I made. In here, we can grab this slow zoom in, select all of our clips, drag it on there, and you'll see that the clip has added a new transform effect that covers the duration of the clip. Not too shabby, right? You got 100 clips, that's an easy way to make that go faster. Okay. I think we're at a good point that we can add some music to this slideshow. So let's come here, pull up our music cue. I already have my in and out points selected, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop this into my sequence. Open this up so we can look at it, and let's play it back. All right, so this is starting to feel pretty good, and it looks like a nice slideshow. But I feel like we can kick it up another notch. Let's keep going. So the next thing I wanna do is to select all of these clips and holding Alt, drag up to create duplicates of them. And then holding Shift and selecting all of the cross dissolves, let's get rid of these things on video layer two. Whoops, don't want that. And that guy, goodbye. Okay, now select the video layer two clips again and hit remove attributes, uncheck everything except for the transform effect. All right, we're back to our static images. Now, what are we gonna do? I have some smooth slide effects that we're gonna throw on that are gonna add a unique effect really quickly that'll look really nice. So let's grab a clip and let's grab a smooth slide down and see what that looks like. Okay. So it scales down our video layer two image so that we can see a little bit of the image below it and it gives it a lot of nice movement, sliding in from the top, pausing, and then sliding out of frame. If we add this to the rest of our images, you'll see how well this flows together. Not too bad, huh? Looks nice, and it was super, super easy. Let's keep going. We can make it look even better. I also have in these presets 
an image rotate left and right. And these are just slight rotations to give this animation a little bit more life. So I want to use both of these rotations and an easy way to do that is to select alternating clips, hit Alt and Up on the keyboard. With those clips still selected, I'm gonna drag image rotate right onto the clip and then select all the clips on video layer two and drag image rotate left. Now let's see what we have. Okay, you see what we're getting here? This is pretty nice, right? But we can keep going. Something you see is that the foreground image is still a little hard to differentiate between the background image. So to fix that is another effect that I created for you. That'll give it a slight border and a slight shadow so that we can separate these images out. If you want to tweak the size of the border, all you have to do is select one of the clips, go to effect controls and look for the drop shadows. The drop shadow on the bottom is the actual drop shadow that you see. The four drop shadows above it are what make the white border around the clip. So if you open those up, you can adjust the width of that border by changing the distance. So if I go here and hit 40, 40, 40, and 40, you'll see that the border of my image grew by that much. I'm gonna drop that back to 20 just so it matches the rest of the clips. Cool. Okay, let's click out of that. So this is starting to look pretty cool. We're almost done. And you can tell our computer's having to think a little bit more because we have so many effects going on. That's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and drop my playback resolution to a half to hopefully help that a little bit. Now, to make this stand out even more, I wanna add a Lumetri color effect to the clip on the bottom. Let's twirl down the Creative tab and drop the Vibrance all the way down. Now, why the Vibrance? I did the Vibrance because it desaturates the image almost all the way, but leaves just a hint of color. And I think that looks pretty cool. The next thing I wanna do is go up here and grab a slight blur. So we'll do a Gaussian blur. Okay, twirl up the Mitri, and let's change this to say 20. And also make sure you check repeat edge pixels, otherwise you'll get some funkiness around the edges of the frame. All right, and how does that look? Oh, that's pretty cool, huh? So to get these effects onto all of the Video Layer 1 effects, we could select these, copy and paste like we did earlier, or we can select this clip, hit Control C, then select all the clips on the bottom of the timeline, right click, say Paste Attributes, and make sure that Lumetri Color and Gaussian Blur are selected. Nothing else though. Hit OK. And now, our effects have been pasted across that whole thing. And you can tell I'm still having a little bit of trouble playing back. So I'm gonna drop this to a quarter. And let's see if this will play back for us. Go to the front and see what we have. All right, this is looking pretty nice. I'm gonna go ahead and call it done. Obviously, you could massage the transitions so they matched up to the music a little bit better. You could finesse it a little bit more, add your own effects any way that you want to, but I hope that this gives you some good building blocks for creating your own slideshow. If you like what you saw, please subscribe and be sure to download the free presets that I've included for you. Thanks guys, and we'll see you next time.